we were in Australia with Jane and Sticky, and they were, oh, grooming, and I said, the only thing that we can differentiate for everybody else is the snow. It's the snow. Good, done, next. Why do I love Big White? The memories I have of this place, ah. I looked at my friend and said, it's not going to get better than this. I like to think that I get more powder in a year than most people do in their lifetime. What better place to, to grow up? A little bit off the page and it's different. My best friends I've met on this hill, I've had some of the best memories in my life. It's that opportunity to be on the snow, be close to snow, to just ski in, ski out. Big White feels like home. Big white. There's nothing quite as free as gliding down a mountain, sailing through a beautiful day. Wandering through the snow in the village on the mountain. Some ski resorts open up because they're like a great corporate experience, and some ski resorts open up because there's a bunch of people who are really passionate about skiing and snowboarding. And Big White's in the latter. We grew up in Utopia. Work was play. It, it was fun. It, it still is. There's a table in Snowshoe Sam's called the Dancing Table. We made that in year two because the Detroit Ski Club that would come every year were dancing on the tables and they were breaking the table. To this day, still holds the record and it's 86 people off the dance floor on the table for one whole song. There was no big nightlife in Kelowna back then. You just stayed up here because it, this was where all the fun was. My first trip over here, I was uh, in grade seven, uh, living in Sydney at the time. I first stayed at my grandfather's place, which is what the chalet just over, over to my left, just over there. I, can, I still think about arriving in the village, parked out at the front, and looking up at the night sky from this just literal wonderland of, you know, compared to what I'd ever seen before in Australia. It was, was quite amazing. In the 80s, my grandfather was dead set on another mountain. So he sent my uncle here to have a look around. Peter got on the phone that evening, I think from Snowshoe Sam's, and said, Dad, you have to come and have a look at this place. This place is something else. That was what got my grandfather to come to Big White. What gives us a difference to most other resorts is we always still operate under a, a family that, that lives in the Okanagan rather than reporting to a, a corporate board who reports to its shareholders every year. And Mr. Schumann bought the resort in 1985 and he invited me to come and work at the ski hill and I jumped in and I've been here ever since 1985. He wanted to make a ski in, ski out resort. And he really believed in packaging. It was, you know, you didn't just buy a lift ticket, but you bought a lift ticket and a lesson and rentals and overnight accommodation and meal packages. And it was that kind of vacation that was the first all-inclusive ski vacation. The appray was great. Hot tubs were great. Nachos were great. Steak dinners and roast beef dinners were great. Music was great. The dance floors were great. The snow was magical. It was raw fun. It was, it was all about sliding on snow. Snowboarding wasn't around back then. It was long skis, two, 207s, 210s. And people found Big White literally from all across Western Canada just to taste that thing we call Okanagan Champagne Powder.
resort has changed a lot since since those days. It was, uh, you know, the same highlights of when I came here in the 1988 uh, still exist today. I came to Big White through a friendship with Peter Plummer, our, our president and CEO. The mountains is something that I've chased and it's, it holds a special place in my heart and soul and same for my wife. We arrived right after the season had finished. Immediately we connected with some people in the resort, some of the staff, and I think uh, you know, that just made us feel at home uh, right away. We live in snow pines, just a stone's throw from the centre of the village, and it's, the access is just phenomenal. There's a bunch of people, a bunch of families up here that are really passionate about skiing and snowboarding. So in that aspect, it's really nice to see that that has carried and the spirit of what's going on with Big White and our history has, has carried forward. I think one of the things that it really has is it has this longevity of a lot of the folks that have been here for a really long time. We're seeing businesses that are from Kelowna that are moving up. We're seeing family-based businesses that are moving into this area, but because they have that same set of family values that Big White has always had. One of my favorite things about like hospitality and especially having a restaurant at a ski resort is you have families and parents um, who've saved up for potentially years to bring their family on a once in a lifetime vacation. As a parent, I'd say I know how that feeling is where you've just created a memory for your kids and for your family. So you just have these moments with families where they're just so excited to, um, to be there and that's kind of my favorite part of it. Restaurant tours are realizing that the ski hill can be uh, a place where they can really expand their brand and really create a different experience for people. We can see that through the Nixon group moving up here with my, my group moving up here. They want to really have a part of Big White and really create a better experience. Getting up at three o'clock in the morning to plow the parking lots, that, that isn't a job that you have because it's a job. That's a lifestyle you live because you're part of the passion of what our resort is. And that allows the personality of the resort to come out in the middle of one of the best places to recreate on Earth. To keep people behaving themselves on a powder day uh, would be a Herculean task for a ski patrol. We start off our morning with everyone in the ski patrol at 7.45, and we talk about our operational plan for the day, as well as certain safety precautions that we're gonna take. I like seeing people develop from a kid who shows up to be a ski patroller because they're a ski bum, into someone who can go forward and enjoy powder for the rest of their life, or find skills that will keep them involved in the ski industry going forward. With a year-round operation, we'll get people for three or four years that do both biking patrol and winter ski patrol. It adds on a new season, it adds on kind of a new skill set. We're trying to build something bigger than just a ski resort, and we need all 12 months of the year to get there. We really are different than most of the other resorts, where we focus on family, and that means you want everything for a mom and dad to be comfortable from a five months old to the grandfather that's 75 years old. You know, it's, it's that opportunity to be on the snow, be close to snow, to just ski in, ski out. And, you know, it's a great place for kids to learn. So I'd heard about how family friendly Big White Ski Resort is, and it really is. It's great for all ages, but it's especially awesome for families and that's exactly what we are. We were a young family and my two-year-old was able to get out on skis and you know, I can see that you know this is something that I'm passionate about, my wife's passionate about and I can see already in, in his eyes and the smiles and when, he's, when his face absolutely just lights up when he gets that pizza and starts shredding down the mountain that he's just absolutely loving it. I came to this mountain originally in 2008. Um, you know I was 22, I was having a great time um, but when I really fell in love with the mountain it was probably about eight years ago when my daughter um, told me that she wanted to start snowboarding. I started to experience the mountain through the lens of a parent and through as, as a dad, and um, I think that's a really special experience. 
Skiing and snowboarding is a place where kids can have freedom, like I did as a kid, of being able to feel like we're safe to go off on our own. And that parents are able to have a really good time. That's something that I really do treasure about this place, that it remembers that it is family focused. We take it for granted because nowhere else would you get to like be in your own home and looking out the window and seeing the fireworks. We have a perfect view of them. And then we tie it into like our family movie nights on Saturday. So we always do carnival and we'll do pizza night. We'll usually go to underground or wherever, grab a pizza, go home, watch a movie and then stay up for the late night fireworks. So it's super fun and also part of our family dynamic and something that we enjoy. He has not seen fireworks before that. And we have a big bay window that we all stand in to watch it. So we pop him up on the window ledge and he just sat there and stared at them in awe. It was super cute. And my husband took so many photos of it, but it's really sweet, like the fact that they can all stand there and share in this memory. And I hope that they remember that. If I knew what made the big white community have that sort of community magic, I think it could be reproduced in other places, but it, it can't. People in the community love to share big white with guests. So you'll meet them on the chairlift, your kids will be skiing with their kids in a ski school class. Your kids will meet their kids on the skating rink or at the tubing park. The next thing you know, they're, they're in your house or your cabin or your condo or you're in theirs. And you're really sharing experiences. And you're, you're sharing the love for the great outdoors. The community that you see through the fire hall, the community through the resort, and then just the community at large through the school, having my little one in the school, and you just meet so many people that are just so passionate about such a small community. You see the same people regularly, and you know, it's just, it's great to have those friendships and, um, you know, people that you see in day-to-day -day and work are also in the fire department, they're on the ski patrol, and you know, you see them at the shop, and it's just, it's pretty cool to, to just, see the same people all the time and, and just really come together and, and everyone knows one another, everyone knows one another's kids. We're a family run resort. The family lives and works and plays and is part of the fabric of this mountain and, and Kelowna. We don't have a push for unbridled corporate growth that you see uh, happen not just in our industry but in, in a lot of industries. So I think we can be a bit more responsive but we can also be a little bit more uh, respectful of what got us here to, to start with. What my grandfather saw and what he planned when he got here was I, I think we've well gone past, I think, the expectations. I got a letter this morning, boy. Hey, hey, honey. I'd always ridden as a kid, but never true mountain biking, especially BC style mountain biking. And uh, one day I went for a, a bike ride with my friend, promptly went over the handlebars and went, I gotta get me some more of that. He thought I would never ride again. Um, and then we kind of formed a, a, a friendship around mountain biking and we started just investigating what can be done. That was the start uh, mountain biking in Big Wipe. Throughout BC, you can count on your hand of uh, several resorts that are really developing great summer operations and year-round operations, and uh, Big White's right there. You really say why Big White's a unique location, both in the summer and the winter when you come up here in the summertime. I do a lot of hiking here, and that's something that we undersell a lot, is that we've got lift-assisted hiking, and you can actually go around and you can actually find a gem lake. Like, it exists, you can't find it in the winter, but you can find it in the summer. There's some flowers and there's some wildlife up there that happens nowhere else uh, except at the top of Big White and in the Arctic, Taiga, and Tundra area. What I wanted to do and what still drives me to enjoy this place is I want kids to have the same experience that I had when I first arrived. One of my favorite days skiing, I had a, a friend of mine over from Australia. It's like, well, let's go check out the resort. So we, we went up the, the chair, went up to the top of the tea bar, and it's like, well, let's go and have a look at the cliff. You can hear, like, you know, like, cliff's gonna open soon. You can hear the blasting going on, and you know it's gonna be good. You know, you can hop up to the top, and you have that moment where you're looking down, you're like, I don't know about this. Like, how is this gonna go? 
to drop gates when people are waiting. Uh, okay. It's the best feeling in the world to give people powder in that steep terrain. Oh, it's so good! got to the top of the cliff just as the patroller was pulling back the rope and opening. And after a good dump of snow, bluebird day, I looked at my friend and said, it's not going to get better than this. So his first run of the day <laughs> was, was the cliff chair. So he had a blast and it was perfect. It was just, you know, it was like, it was everything that it was meant to be. It was like, there you go. Yeah, I think that was one of the things in my first ski season that really impressed me is like, Big White is big. It's literally in the name. And it's, it's there was more terrain and more varied terrain than I had initially anticipated. You know, I lived in Whistler for seven years, huge mountains, two of them. Um, you know, but to come here and, and just the, see the expanse of the terrain, the, the difference of the, of the zones is, is insane. Like, you know, you look at Black Forest and you've got these low angle, wide open trees that are great for any skier just to sort of get off the piste and get into the trees and, and just learn trees is, is, is awesome to have. Um, and then you've got the steeper trees, you know, over in Jam and, and, uh, and Powder. You know, you can get super deep, super pitted, it's, it's unreal. Time and time again, you can just do lap after lap in super deep trees and just, you know. And that's the great thing about Big White is that the crowds just don't exist. Like, yeah, they're busy on a Saturday morning at 10 a.m., but which resort isn't, right? Like, you get out there any other day or any other time and, and you just, you know, you've got this section of the mountain to yourself and it's just phenomenal. We have a lot of diversity in our trails and we have a lot of diversity within our pods or zones and that um, allows families to ski together on a certain uh, lift and not necessarily have to take the same way down together. So we have an amazing uh, ability to get people skiing in the same pod um, of different ski levels. Hearing and expressing people's joy as we're riding along is something that's absolutely wonderful. Um, and sharing that stoke and, and riding with others and feeling like you go out and you bump into people and all of a sudden you've got a posse, we're just carrying that stoke on with each other. The other one that we've got a saying for is we're all friends on a powder day. There's plenty of pow here for everyone. I want this place to grow. Honestly, like I want to have more people experience the amazingness. Growth is the big question right now. There's always growing pains when you're trying to grow any business. You see some of the struggles that other resorts are having around the world um, with massive lift lines, traffic issues, and we just tend to avoid that. Um, you know, we've got expansive terrain, really well planned out, and uh, you know, we want the best experience for that guest. As a resort, we take very seriously that we have a product out there that involves being outside. We have to be very aware of the impact of whatever we do on this piece of land that we, we, we call Big White, like whether it's for future ski runs or for uh, building development to, to you know, make as little impact as possible. It's, it's, it's a fine balance. Um, as a province and as a country, those, those objectives are, are changing. We're much more aware now of the effect that we, we have on the environment. And you know, we take every step that we, we possibly can to, to mitigate what we do within our area and the watershed and the wildlife. You know, in the winter, it, it's road safety. The summer season for us, wildfire is, is the biggest uh, hazard that we face. And what we've experienced in British Columbia um, is unprecedented uh, fire seasons um, and you know we're not immune to, to that we're, we're in what's known as the wildland urban interface where we butt right up against the forest so that's a significant push uh, from from my department here 
uh, to the community is, is fire smarting and being, being prepared. And when I first started here in, in 2004, we would do maybe 100 calls um, in, a, in a year. Uh, now we're, we're over 300. With that growth from a, an emergency management perspective or a public safety perspective, you know, we need services uh, to, to manage that growth. We've brought the Protect Our Winters partnership is really important. We're a resort alliance partner, which means that we're, we're advocating for real climate change and, and helping to bring more members to the fold. I'm, I'm pretty excited about the, the partnership with Powell and, and, and working towards, you know, a more sustainable uh, future and what that means for us as an industry. We operate in a, in a business that's probably going to be most affected by, by what we see with climate change. But Powell also has advocacy of the consumers and you know, that represents a lot more people than just the individual resorts themselves. I, I think that's, that's a huge part that gives them leverage that we can't get just by ourselves. One of the things that I like about snow sports is that it gets more people involved in the outdoors and it gets more people involved in the outdoors in the winter. Because I think uh, regardless of what you think about uh, climate change, if you're a winter person, you're very aware that our climate is shifting uh, substantially. And it makes us all a little bit more aware because it's so right there in front of you. As a, a business that operates on, you know, lands that we love to recreate on, it's so important for not just our business, but you know, humanity at large to just be aware of impact on, on the planet. And, you know, everything's connected. The water from the top of Big White runs down through Mission Creek into the Okanagan, Okanagan Lake. And, and so we're intricately connected to our, our surroundings. It's progress over perfection and it's, it's bit by bit. And, you know, now having a, a son that's three years old, I, I look at him and I think about the future and I want to leave it a better future than I found it and I came into and we each have our responsibility to make that change and try and leave the world better for future generations. My name is Samuel Peters and I'm an ambassador for Big White Ski Resort. Someone reached out to me with uh, the ambassador role and I looked at it and I thought, wow, this could be a great opportunity for me. I was really stoked to join the ambassador team. The invitation came and I was really excited to accept it. Having sort of a broad spectrum of individuals on the ambassador team means that it's really relatable to the individual and to the community. Um, you know, Ian Deans went to, the, went to the local community school here when he was a, a little one and, you know, was best friends with Ned Island who also went to the school. You've got Sam Peters, who's been in the, in the freestyle team for, for a bunch of years. You've got the Tom Van Steenbergens, Bass Van Steenbergen, Kelsey Surwar, and Tess Critchlow. first woman in Canada to be certified at the level four through the exam process. And for a long time, I was the only woman um, in Cassie and at our top levels. I'm in beautiful big white Canada. I'm Melon Day, and I hope that helps through snowboarding. Big White has always made that both something that feels really inclusive, but that they never put me up as like, uh, oh, you know, this is a person on a pedestal. I'm just a snowboarder. Big White has been supporting me for a long time. They've been funding Powder Hounds, which is um, an adaptive program to help disabled people learn to ski. Some people have never heard of adaptive skiing. I want to reach them so that they come out and try it and learn to love the sport. For other adaptive athletes or, or aspiring uh, adaptive athletes to see that and see themselves on the big screen when we do content with Sam or, or even just see him around the resort is really, really inspiring. I remember the first day that I became an independent sit skier um, with the help of Powder Hounds. Powder Hounds helped me learn how to ski by myself. It made me feel incredible, made me feel free on the hill. So 
They go out and represent us globally. So, you know, whether they're on social media or whether they're just in their in their circle, everyday circles, they're able to represent the, the resort in a, in a light that we want the resort represented. And I think that's, uh, that's super important. Big White has the snow you love. Big White boasts one of the finest snow records in the world, with up to 40 feet per year. Being here in this community, it, 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 checks, it checks both of my um, key boxes, right? Being able to, to be in the fire service, but being able to ski, and now, now with the summer operations to mountain bike. Making your family, making your life here, uh, kids or no kids, um, moving here and living here is, is really important. And that's important to the resort, it's important to the community, and those two things really go hand in hand. And I think that that motivates some of the kids and some of the people that are moving to this community, and again, like me, choosing to live here, that this is a place to live and establish your snow sports career for the future, not just a place to come for one time. I didn't come over here with the expectation or the plan to be where I am today. I came over here with the expectation to work and have a good time and something stuck. Kids are still having that experience. Kids are still coming over here and this might be what they end up doing like I am 25 years from now. And that's, that's kind of cool. At the end of the day, we're, we don't take ourselves too seriously. You know, everyone here, everyone on the executive team, everyone who comes here for a season or six seasons or a lifetime, you know, they're here because they're passionate about one thing and that's skiing and snowboarding. This is our life. It's not a job. It, it's a way of life. I, I raised my kids on this mountain. I grabbed my wife from Australia and said, we're gonna go to Canada and we're gonna do some really neat things. And her comment was, well, I'll give you two years. Well, we've now been here for over 30. I see a vision that definitely goes well beyond my tenure here. What we're working towards with our master plan that's in process, you know, is a, is a vision. Um, it is a vision that certainly is bigger than what my career here will be. The legacy I want to leave is being able to create those experiences for the families that do, that do come here. I just want people to see it as a, a, a place that it was fun to be in and offered good times for them and their families and offered them memories that, you know, um, an escape from wherever they've come from. At Big White, we've got more than skiing. You'll love our village on a mountain.